if we pause AI development as a society, well, I look forward to seeing what you what you say about this. Um, I have a blog post uh, below that you want to read read this in, instead of hear it, uh, but I'll I'll riff off of of that idea a bit here. Um, so apparently, I'm not AI because I'm still trying to figure out what I want to say. Um, okay, I am self admittedly uh, an AI optimist, so you should know that up front. Um, I have always been optimistic about the potential of technology to help humanity. And I see it as a tool, um, just like money is a tool, just like electricity or fire is a tool. It could be used to burn down houses or it could be used to um, fuel engines and do all every cook food, everything else that we do with, with fire. And AI is the same way. People who are well. For, first of all, let me let me just say say briefly that this was instigated by uh, there's a there's a there's an open letter going around that is signed by <clears throat> Elon Musk and a bunch of other famous people um, that we should stop pause AI development for six months. And it sounds so reasonable. I mean, yes, it lists the dangers of AI, and of course, I know about them too. Now I'm not if I'm not responsible for them because I'm you know I'm a I'm a was a citizen and I have no control over these companies and these systems I'm just simply a, a user of it and I would say that I'm a positive user of it and I'm teaching others to use it positively which by the way trains the AI system to go in one direction or another so it's kind of like social media I've been saying this for years good people please do not leave social media because what happens if you leave social media who's left well everyone else is left by the way the, the masses are are still there except the most you know I, when i say good people i yes i'm praising all of you watching my videos you are the wisest and most loving people on the planet you're the, the smartest and most loving people on the planet if you leave social media who's left the masses are left and left without your voices so same thing with ai is if we good people do not use ai who's going to use ai you think you think it's going to stop? You think it's okay? So so let's talk about this. Should we pause AI development? Okay, let's think about let's think about let's think about this for a moment. Okay, if we put up that rule, that policy, oh let's uh, let's all let's all hold hands and pause AI development. You, you know who's going to pause? Sure, a couple of the good companies will pause. The good guys will pause because they're law abiding and they want to be have good PR. You know who's not going to pause? China. Russia, by now, I'm not saying China and Russia is all, all bad, but there are elements in certain less de democratic countries. Would you agree? China, Russia, less. Certain countries that are less democratic are working full time on AI. I mean, they're working really hard to catch up to the US companies about AI. And do you think they're going to be using it in as benevolent a way, you know, politically speaking and, and disinformation? Do you think? No, of course they're not going to stop development AI. I mean, that's crazy. That's it. I mean, not crazy. It's it's highly, highly unlikely that you know, even if they put a PR move saying yes, we're going to sign this X Y Z accords or whatever. You think secretly they're not doing it? Of course they're doing it. And even the companies in the U.S. You you think you think just because we all sign and hold hands, we're all no. The, all. So here's here's the, the the open letter that's going on right now. Do you do, do you know who's signing it? Do you know who's signing it? It's the competitors of the two leading companies who are signing the letter. Mm, interesting. How come the two leading companies, none of them, nobody in the from those companies signed the letter, and yet the competitors are all signing it? Because the competitors say, wait, 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 we can't catch up to what you guys are doing. Oh, yes, and societal dangers. Well, everyone knew about this. The leading companies know about the societal dangers and are trying to just particularly open AI. If you haven't yet watched the interview between the CEO of OpenAI, Sam Altman, and Lex Friedman, uh, Friedman uh, this interview just happened uh, in, in late March of 2023. So, hello, future people. Some of you are like, wait, um, <laughs> that's old school. But yes. Go and watch that interview. And having watched interviews with Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, having watched how they do things, 
I have developed a sense of trust in them. And you might not, you might not, because you're you're reading the New York Times and you're you're listening to news and other things. The news is makes money scaring you, including the New York Times. You you don't think that's the case? Of course. It, any news makes money scaring you. Because what and not just scaring you, but angering you. Anger and fear are the two greatest ways for news outlets to stay in business. And you know who's really threatened by AI? The news outlets. Because AI can generate news articles way faster than any journalist. And of course, the journalists that are good will modify it and put it in their own voice to make it more human and authentic. But the most threatened professions by AI, you know who it is? It's not the plumbers. It's not the, you know, um, it's it's not it's not the, the the people doing blue collar work. That's not they're not threatened by AI right now. You know who's threatened? Financial sector is very threatened by AI. The bankers and analysts, their their jobs are because who can analyze numbers and create financial reports faster than you know much way more efficiently? AI can. Who else is threatened by AI? Um, the uh, like I said the. Um, Oh, the legal industry is very threatened by AI because who can analyze laws and create legal briefs? AI can do it way faster, way faster than than, than humans. Who who else is threatened by AI? Let me let me let me tell you. So, financial sector, the legal sector, um, the uh, sorry, I'm, you know, as a human being, I have to still look at notes. The media, as I've said, is very threatened by AI, and many techies. Because AI can generate code. It's getting better and better and better at generating good code really fast. And the techies who spent years and so, so much money getting their tech degree, um, coding degree, it's gonna, it's gonna be obsolete pretty soon. They're gonna have to do things that they as tech techies don't like to do, which is interact with people, do project management, all that stuff that the coders don't don't love. But it's like, well, if AI is gonna do the code, what are we left to do? We're overseeing the AI do it. <clears throat> so financial sector, legal sector, the media, techies, these are the most threatened positions. And also artists, sorry, but cop copywriters, writers like myself, teachers like myself, you know, kind of independent teachers like myself, we're, 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 we're all threatened by AI. And so not surprisingly, these are the sectors that are yelling the loudest about we got to stop this AI stuff. We got to stop using it. You know, artists are saying, we got to stop using AI. We're going to pledge to not, okay, okay, you're, you're, you're going to do that? All right. So you're not going to keep up on your skills of using AI to create even better art than non-artists use AI to create art? Did you, <laughs> of course, as artists with great taste, you're going to create better AI art than I can. I don't have that good of a taste in art, but I can create beautiful art now thanks to AI. It looks good to me, but to you, you can see as an artist, you can see it's not that great. But you can use it. So it's like, are you kidding me about wanting to, first of all, either pause societal development, which is like we say, it's not going to be enforceable. No, really, really? Do you really believe that good and bad companies, good and bad actors are all going to hold hands and say, yeah, that's right. Let's stop. No, no. These people are cynically trying to stop the two leading players who are the only two non-signatories. Everyone else is saying, yeah, can you guys please stop? And so we can catch up. They're not saying that they're using the society. They're they're using they're pulling our heartstrings to to do this. But no, it's Elon Musk is mad at OpenAI for not being able to control that company. He he co-founded and he left. Matt he's he has a feud with them right now, and he's like the, the top sign. You know, so it's like, do you really see this as being a a good society move? Like they're all you know, they're all hippies trying to you know, they're all good people. Trying, no, they're not. This is so. What's behind this sort of call for a pause is very commercial and political and yeah and uh, selfish in my opinion and also not not only selfish but but they themselves know that it's not going to happen and they're just signing it to, in case something goes wrong we could say see i told you so it's so it's so uh, incredible so let me tell you what what do we do instead if we we're, if we can't pause AI development because no matter how many how how many regulators come and say FTC will say stop everybody stop stop stop, people are still going to do it in secret, and worse yet, 
it's going to create a national security problem for the United States when China and Russia and other countries that are less democratic and you know, more anti-U.S., when they develop it, and they're going to have a much smarter AI systems than us. We're, we're, you know, the U.S. is in trouble. North America basically is in, is, is in trouble. So um, no, we should not stop development of AI because it's it's unrealistic to stop it. So what should we do instead? We should regulate it, yes, but we should develop ethical guidelines that are widely propagated. That every company who wants to come out with an AI product needs to basically, you know, say yes, this is what we're following. And guess what? Open AI is already doing that to a really good job. Have you ever tried using ChatGPT? Have you noticed <laughs> you, you try to ask it to do this or do that? And you know, with that, they have like very tight guardrails. You can't say this, you can't say that. So sort of the, the locking down of free speech is already quite strong with ChatGPT and open AI is and like I said, please watch the interview with the founder of OpenAI, the CEO of OpenAI, and you'll 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 kind of after hearing him talk for an hour, you'll get the feeling of it. You'll get the feeling of, okay, I see what this guy's trying to do here. Okay, so what should we do if we can't pause or stop AI development? Here's what you and I, because nobody watching this is the leader of an AI company. If, if you are, I'm so honored. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sam, for, for watching this. No, um, no one watching this is, is, is in any position of authority to stop this stuff or pause this stuff, right? If you are, please comment below. I'm really impressed that you're here. But what we are doing is we're like little people, you know, like we either decide. So we, 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 you and I have two choices. We either use the AI or we don't use the AI. We have two choices. Right. What, what other choice do we have? We either use it or don't use it. Okay. And I've noticed that the people who are criticizing AI don't use AI. Well, of course, if you're going to have a negative mindset around AI, I understand why you won't want to use it. Or if you, you, if you use it, you only use it enough to criticize it, right? You, you don't really learn how to use it like the way I've learned how to use it, right? So <laughs> the critics and the pessimists are not using AI and therefore they can continue, you know, uh, they can continue damaging its reputation, which I understand. You, you, you're so focused on the dangers for society, for misinformation, for careers, and for um, the environment or whatever. You're so okay. I understand. Actually, the irony is AI might actually save save the environment, but that's that's a separate topic um, because it's been trained that way. But anyway, let's okay. And then the AI optimists like me, obviously, we lean in, we learn this stuff. And we find so much benefit from using it. And we're like, oh my God, you're crazy not to use it. You're crazy not to, this stuff is so helpful. How can you not use this, right? So, so the two sides have to come together and go, let's talk, let, let's hear each other out and let's develop because it's not gonna, the genie's not going back into the bottle. The, the, the toothpaste is not going back into whatever analogy you want to use. Like the cat's out of the bag, right? There's lots of these analogies going around. It's not going to go back. It's not going to go backwards. You can you can you can protest all you want. It's too convenient, just like social media was. It's too, just like the internet was. Just like electricity was. Just like fire was. It's too damn convenient for any for for it to stop. Society is just going to keep going faster and faster for this stuff. So you have a choice: use it or not use it. And I think you are truly in danger. You focus on the dangers of society. You are truly in danger, honestly, if you, no, sorry, I don't mean to strike fear, but this is the first time you'll notice in my channel, I don't strike fear, right? But this time is different. This is the first time I've been so awake about a technology. I, I've usually been a laggard. I've usually been like, ah, Bitcoin, NFT, whatever. I mean, you saw me, I was like critiquing that stuff and I never invested, you know, NFTs, Bitcoins, crypto. I'm like, set aside, and some of you are crypto enthusiast sorry about that but i i just saw that it wasn't going to end well for most people and it and it didn't right and most techno most other technologies even social media new features i'm like whatever i'll just wait until everyone tests this stuff out and it really keeps being used on a daily basis by my clients sure then i'll learn it and i'll teach it really well this is the first time where i said this is not this is time is different this is very different and you either are going to endanger your own career. Now, let me say this again. I, again, I don't, I, don't, I don't mean to strike fear, but I do mean to be really serious with you about my concern for you. You either are going to damage your career with every day you don't learn this stuff, or 
you're going to accelerate the value you can add to society and to your clients by learning this stuff well. You don't have to learn it from me. Plenty of YouTube videos are free to watch about how to use ChatGPT, how to use MidJourney. Those are the two that I recommend learning first. And then there's tons of other tools. You'll start finding out all the other best-in-class tools. You either endanger your career by not, oh, but people always need human connection. Okay, I'll say this. If you're a massage therapist or other body-based, like you literally work with the body and, and your business is doing great, okay, that's, that's a question too. As people more, get more and more mesmerized with AI, you think social media was mesmerizing? You think social media was addicting? You haven't seen anything yet right? Wait until the sex bots come in. No, really. I mean, you haven't seen anything yet. We're going to be able to create movies instantly. Oh, I want to see the Matrix 5. And then by next year, that's this is my prediction, you're going to be able to create Matrix 5 by typing it or by speaking it. And Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss will be acting and you can, you can barely tell it's not them. And it'll create a plot for you instantly because you can already create a plot. Creating a plot is already can be done instantly by text. And now they're doing text to video very, very rapidly. And, and within 12 months, it's going to be it's going to be deep fake. It's going to be so easy. So it's going to be so mesmerizing. People won't, <laughs> a lot fewer people will go to massage therapists and body-based businesses also, which is the sad part. So, but then again, you have a choice. You either learn to use this stuff to enhance the values that you want to promote in the world, the values of ecology of human connection, of authentic art and beauty, whatever it is, the value you want, spirituality, spiritual growth, being pri primary above productivity and above money making. And above, yes, I agree. You have a choice of either using this stuff, just like in the beginning, social media, you have a choice of using it or not using it. If you use it, you get to promote your values in the world and sh help shape the world. And by not using it, you are retreating and letting others, because you think you're going to retreat into your own, you know, little circle, but that circle is thinning out, right? Because everyone's going to get mesmerized with AI. So you either use it to promote your heart and values and keep, stay human, right? Or you don't use it and you fall behind in your career and your ability to promote to share your values, to have the world be, be your values, to have the world embody more of the world, embody the values you believe in. What's your choice? Blue pill, red pill. <laughs> I don't know if that's the best analogy these days, sorry. But I choose to use this stuff for good because it's not going back in the bottle and, oh, you're afraid of misinformation. Yes, I know, I understand. But what's the, what's the, what's the antidote to misinformation? It's systems that counter misinformation. What's the, what's the antidote to deep fake politicians or people deep faking you and scamming people you know? What's this? What's the, I, you, you're going to wait till that happens because it's going to happen. It's going to, right? But bad actors are going to do it. They're not going to stop with AI development. It's systems, good actors who use probably AI systems to counter the bad actors. It's like email. In the beginning of email, there was spam already. Spam and scams. My own family was scammed out of tens of thousands of dollars because my, my father in the beginning of email didn't know and, and fell into some scams. But now, of course, he knows very well. And there are systems to, to counter spam is also now quite common. Um, so it, it's not going back into the bottle, guys. It really isn't. I mean, you, you fantasize that it will, it won't. I mean, look at, look at reality, okay? Just look at, just observe. And so we have a choice. You choose to use it for good or you choose to hide and it'll come for you before long. I'm not saying that to fear monger. I say that in truth. So I hope you will make, well, I'll let you make the choice. So, all right. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was interesting at the very least. And I look forward to seeing any comments you want to add below. Thanks.